Bio-based materials are made from substances that come from living organisms. The most common examples tend to be seaweed and alginates or algae. Those bio-based materials are very often biodegradable, but do note that is not always the case. In addition to that, a number of materials are being created from bio-based input, like bioplastics and, in the case of packaging, oftentimes mycelium or mushroom-based materials as well. We most often see bio-based materials in the world of packaging. For example, the mycelium or mushroom example I referenced earlier tends to be in what's referred to as secondary packaging. So if your iPhone comes in the case, there is a high chance that the tray that holds your iPhone would in fact be created by a bio-based material. That could be an algae, it could be a seaweed, it could be a corn or soy-based material. In addition to that, consumers may be very familiar with bio-based plastics. Those are plastics that are created from the use of corn or other agricultural items to create a, a typical or standard conventional plastic, except with a bio-based source. Some of the benefits of bio-based materials typically stem from the fact that they are a renewable resource, rather than using a non-renewable resource like an oil or a petroleum-based resin. This means they tend to have a lower environmental impact and can be used across multiple cycles. What's key and critical here to remember is that we have to engage both economies and communities to really reap the benefits of these materials using localized efforts so we can transfer the value to those communities and support the sustainable development goals. Um, it's also incredibly important to note that the specific benefits and risk of bio-based materials is exceptionally dependent on the specific materials and their application being used. There are a number of disadvantages to be made aware of in the world of bio-based materials. For example, in the world of bio-based plastics, those materials are considered a contaminant in your typical recycling infrastructure and recycling streams. That means a loss of value to your typical material recovery facility. In essence, the presence of a bio-based plastics thus reduces the value in its secondary and tertiary life cycles. Governments and organizations could support these technologies to enable them to reach its potential. And they can do that by three different sort of steps. Um, currently, there are many different startups operating in this space um, to replace single-use plastics. The key challenge, however, is around commercial viability and feasibility. So investment in this area is really crucial to promote scalability. Second of all, uh, I'd like to make a point about regulation. So there's a lot of pressure um, in this place. Little tangible regulation though. So passing on certain legislation, ar legislation around um, plastic could further enable it to achieve its potential. And the third point I'd like to make here is around that different materials have different levels of maturity. So for example, some seaweed alginates are at very early stage, whereas three-based fibers are, are already commonly used um, to replace single-use plastics. And if there's, there's not the right components and equipment to make it, or if it can't be done at size, at speed, at scale, um, and at low cost, its maturity development is hindered. And these are the three examples I'd like to point out um, in where organizations and governments could really support these technologies to enable its scale. To name a couple of examples um, for applications of these bio-based materials, um, first of all, casein, I think is an incredible example, which is a, a byproduct of milk processing. 
It's edible, it's biodegradable, and it has a very strong barrier um, against oxygen and oils. And we use this, for example, um, in edible packaging formats. We can use it for um, sauces, we can um, use it to um, yeah, put liquids in it. Um, second example, uh, chitosan. Um, it's, a, it's a skeleton of shellfish. It's biodegradable, it's compostable, and it has antimicrobial properties as well. And I think specifically um, in the uh, cosmetic sector, the cosmetics packaging sector, it's interesting to see this application. Another um, example of applications of how we use bio-based materials today um, is, for example, alginate. Um, which are edible and biodegradable, so you can use them um, to uh, replace current single-use plastic uh, sauce sachets, uh, which you can eat. And another example I'd like to mention here is mycelium, which are uh, fungus, mushroom, waste uh, type of products. They're energy and carbon negative and bio-based, and we actually already see them in use today um, as a secondary protective packaging uh, for products like bottles. Bio-based materials represent an amazing opportunity as we look into the world of alternative materials for product and packaging. Key advantages of bio-based materials include more positive end-of-life footprint and the ability to potentially biodegrade and or compost. For example, fiber and paper-based materials are becoming more prevalent. That needs to be counterbalanced with some of the disadvantages of bio-based materials. In the example of a bio-based plastic, that material is oftentimes considered a contaminant in our existing recycling stream and will therefore have a lower value in current infrastructure. 